Hello everybody, welcome back, Jordan here. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at this amazing new Lego Marvel set known as the Daily Bugle. Essentially, it is a modular skyscraper. We've been waiting for something like this for a very, very long time. You can see we've got the box right here, which is an 18 plus style box. 76178 is the set number, 3,772 pieces in this massive set. And it comes with 25 Marvel minifigures, most of which you can see right here and some of which are on the building. Now, this building, it's a lot of light bluish gray and a lot of windows, but you get some very colorful minifigures that can be posed all over this thing to create some wicked stories and some amazing storytelling. I cannot wait to show you guys all the details of this set. We got lots to cover, so let's dive right into it. We're going to start our review of the Daily Bugle by taking a look at the exterior of the building. The first thing that needs to be addressed is actually the overall size of this thing. It stands 82 centimeters or 32 inches tall and it sits on a standard 32 by 32 base plate. And it's completely modular which is really cool. Of course on the top of the building here we've got our Daily Bugle sign. You can see that the Spider-Man buggy that comes with this set can actually be stuck to the side of it and rotated actually as well. The main design features of it feature these rails here that are held on using snot bricks and there's a lot of these one by two by two window glass panels. Trans clear. On the right side we've got the fire escape leading right down to the base floor. And there's a little ladder right here that can actually be extended right down to the ground. It's got a newsstand right here, which of course can be popped off there to put a minifigure inside. Inside we've got some sticker elements and also a Wilson Fisk 2x2 print tile. And some 2x2 print tiles in the front there saying no crime, no thanks to Spider-Man. On either side of the entrance, we've got some flowers, checkerboard style tiling for the front there, and you can see we've got a little vestibule that sticks out about one and a half studs. Daily Bugle logo, name of the building. Spider-Man or whichever minifigure can be posed there as you get some trans clear elements to do so. On this floor here, we've got some TV screens. Vote Osborne for Mayor. Fake news. Just the, just the facts. Is Spider-Man to blame? The clones. Earlier today, breaking news, villains promised to stop being bad guys. Can they be trusted? Fake news from the Daily Bugle, of course. Got a little panel right here on the side that can actually be pulled out. And it just sort of fits in there perfectly. Got a rat along with some cardboard boxes on the ground there. You can see there's a Technic pin there. New York sewer there little electrical box there that hides the Technic pin so that you can connect this to other modular buildings. Textured base plates around back here. A little spider web there that's actually holding in Peter Parker's backpack. A couple of trash cans, an AC unit. You see that the base, two the base two floors are actually larger. A little spot right there where you can place a minifigure on that trans clear element similar to the one on the front and multiple other ones throughout this entire build here. We've got matching light fixtures over top of this door here and also the door down there. And as we work our way up the back of the building here, we've got a billboard here, just the facts with J. Jonah Jameson. I call a bluff on that. It's got a couple of lights over top of that there, another AC unit right here with a bird's nest on the top. And we've got our reception tower here with all sorts of different satellites on it. And a water tower, I believe this is. And that right there has two different tags on it, which is the Green Goblin and also Miles Morales. And our Firestorm minifigure is actually supposed to be placed right up here, like so, just using a ball joint. And then our Sandman minifig display can be placed right here just on that jumper tile right there. 
So without even attempting to place any minifigures on this, we've got four of them. We've got Sandman, Spider-Man, Green Goblin, and also Firestorm on the top here. Let's have a look at the minifigs. I'll give it to you guys straight here. It's absolutely incredible how many minifigures that this set comes with. And all of them are very highly detailed, represent iconic Marvel minifigures, just look fantastic, have nice printed torso pieces, alternate faces, some great accessories, and much more. It's, it's crazy. Like It's actually mind-boggling how detailed these minifigures are and how many come in this set. It is simply incredible. Starting on the right side here, we have three different generic civilians in which can be put into things like your taxi cab or the Daily Bugle lobby or the newspaper stand and things like that. To the left of that, in the nice plaid shirt there, we have Robbie Robertson. And to the left of that, we have Ben Urich, who is a Bugle reporter. Then, of course, we have the Punisher, who comes with two awesome weapons, has that classic, iconic Punisher skull put onto his torso piece there. Then you saw earlier, we've got the Green Goblin, Blade, J. Jonah Jameson, who has a fantastic alternate face with the spider web over his mouth. Then you've got his assistant there, or receptionist. We've got Aunt May there with the cookies, sitting beside Gwen Stacy and Peter Parker. Spider-Ham, Daredevil, Black Cat, Firestorm, Miles Morales, Mysterio, Spider-Gwen, Spider-Man, Venom, Carnage, Dr. Ock, or Dr. Octopus, and then in the back here, we've got the amazing Sandman. And the Sandman is a pretty incredible minifigure. He comes with this sort of scene right here. And this top portion right here is actually his leg piece. All of these minifigures are very highly detailed. We could go on for 10, 15 minutes about these minifigures, taking a look at all the alternate faces and all the different details on the body. But let's get to the details inside of the Daily Bugle, just knowing that these are absolutely fantastic. Actually, the first thing I want to show you is the instruction manual, which is actually really cool as well. I've got the Daily Bugle on the front cover here, of course. I've got a write-up on the Daily Bugle and all the different scenes and minifigures within. Boom, look at that. It's like an index for all of the minifigures, all of the names, and a little bit of history about them, a little write-up about them. Pretty sweet, eh? I love how they included that in the Daily Bugle. Because it came with so many minifigures, it's definitely nice to have that addition in the instruction manual. And then you can see with the 16 different bags built. In addition to the minifigs, you also get this taxi cab here. Which is pretty sweet, pairs up nicely with the building, and of course, you could pop the top off, put a minifig inside. Then you get Spider-Man's little buggy here as well, which of course can cling to the side of the Daily Bugle building. So of course this is a modular style building, right? So everything is modular and come off. Now the cool thing about it is not only is it modular floor wise like so, but also the panels that cover the front of the floors can also be removed. So it's got some extreme accessibility based on that. Comes apart in essentially a couple different ways and seeing these building techniques on how they made sort of like those false walls that pop off, it almost reminded me of the backside of the bookshop, I believe they did that there. And at first I wasn't a huge fan of it, but now seeing it in action again, I'm pretty stoked on it. It's not bad and you can see that this is our panel that the Green Goblin's coming bursting through and it's actually pretty stable, like it's Pretty rock solid. These hinge bricks do a pretty good job of securing everything there in place. And as you can see, all the different parts and pieces inside there, you can obviously rebuild it so it looks like a standard panel and it would match the remainder of the building just like this here. And what we're gonna do is just take this thing apart here. You can see the fire escape comes with it. And we'll start by taking a look at the ground floor, which we can continue to 
pull apart here. Got our news stories that come off as well there, or our TV stands, or TV displays, I should say. And of course, that'll just pop off as well. And then finally, we're on the ground floor. Now the ground floor, the front entrance doesn't come off, but that side panel that we were having a look at earlier comes out. So if you wanted to get in there, you could just pop that out there as well so you can have a better look at the inside, which we'll do right now. So the interior is jam-packed with detail. You can see a TV screen right here. And that one there says, this just in, vampire spotted in the subway. Panic, his garlic supplies hit an all-time low. <laughs> Pretty funny. You've got a false elevator in there in the corner. You can see the up and down arrows above the false elevator door. Then you've got some of the newspaper tiles, the two by two tiles, uh, snotted to the wall there. You've got a curved desk there. Sort of like the security desk, and you'll see that it's actually a slide door for the front entrance there. Pretty basic uh, slide door build, which I really liked. No crime. Uh, no thanks to Spider-Man, a little seating area there, and then we've got a vending machine right there, and the floor is tiled green, and as you can see, the TV can just be pivoted out of the way. You've got a back door leading out of the building there with a sticker element on it, and sort of a matching sticker element on this side as well. Exit, do not block. Spider web on the back there as well. Oh, I forgot to show you this. There's a little backpack in there. Spider-Man put his backpack inside, and that is our ground floor. You can see there's all sorts of trinkets and stuff inside. Focus on the desk. There you go. Little uh, statue there, and then we got our elevator there. So that's the ground floor. I think the best thing about it is probably this little guy right here, which is a vending machine. It's pretty sweet. And all this stuff can very easily be popped out, and that's our vending machine right there. Moving up to the next floor there, you can see the elevator in the back right corner there. We've got some TV screens and computer monitors all over these desks here with different news stories. And over here in the corner, we've got some donuts, a coffee machine, and then some more news stories sort of snotted on the wall just in there. You can see them all. They all have different news stories, and the nice thing about this is they're they're print pieces, they're not stickers. You get like a little baggie full of them, which is pretty sweet. You can see it's pretty consistent with those one by two by two uh, glass panels, but it does a good job of giving us good visibility from both the outside and obviously those panels pull away and it's very easy to access and see the details in the inside as well. I guess this is just where a lot of the different employees work and sort of come up with the different news stories for the newspaper, right? Right there you can see some keyboards and also a nice miniature water jug build which can be pulled out of there and seen pretty easily as well. I thought the water jug build was uh, pretty brilliant and it matched the scene nicely. I've actually never seen a water jug built exactly like that. So these are our two wider floors. You can see our little balcony right here with some studs. Pretty basic but very highly detailed. I like this building because it reminds me of like a mock in which maybe you could create yourself. So next up we have Peter Parker, the Spider-Man photographer's office here. He's got a cool little desk there. Spider-Man photo on the wall. He's got some sand blue windows there so you can see through the wall and also a door right here. This is just like his little workstation, I guess. It's crammed in here. He's got his camera, a spider on the wall, spider web, the elevator there, some newspaper stacked up there, some boxes full of stuff. And then this copier right here, which is just a photocopier. And this is a pretty brilliant little build right here. I like that. It's pretty fantastic. And little things like that just are so nice. And you know what? All of the floors are fully tiled, which is a pretty cool touch as well. Then we have our fourth and final floor here, which is J. Jonah Jameson's office. So this is his office here in red, and this is his secretary's office in blue. Oops. So do a little desk repair there, but the elevator's right there as well on the secretary side. So you can see that elevator goes right down to the base floor. And we've got a matching TV screen right here. So that's the television screen that's being projected to the outside as well. It's got a little chrome piece there. This is pretty cool. We got the dark red and also the window frames and door frame. <clears throat> and then you uh, head on into J. Jonah Jameson's 
Office, oh, actually, quickly, we got to show you this here. His, her little computer screen says, Miss Call from Eddie Brock, which, of course, is Venom. And then uh, this is J. Jonah Jameson's office. Reward uh, for Spider-Man photos. And then he's got some mini trophy elements in the back there. And then I should probably flip this piece around. It is correct, though. That's like the amethyst piece right there, which is a wicked... Uh, little piece. Let's see if I can get my big fingers in there and pull that out. That's like an amethyst piece, which is a pretty sweet piece. And then his computer monitor is hilarious. Uh, it says uh, Peter Parker. It says sent Peter Parker web. You're fired. <laughs> so he just fired Peter Parker, I guess, via email. Oh, my man. What a, what a pleasure that would be. You get fired via email. Only J. Jonah Jameson will do that. So, you know, overall, I, I definitely think that this is the best marvel lego set that they've ever released i mean there's been some other really cool ones there's like that spider-man bridge battle that unfortunately i i never got never really had the well i had the opportunity to get it but i, I never really ordered it for some reason i guess it was when i was first started collecting lego and i thought that i had to order two of them to make it worthy but other large uh, marvel sets that i've had before I've, and i still have i have the large ucs style helicarrier which I think was pretty cool. Um, micro scale, though. I also had the uh, UCS-style Hulkbuster as well, the Age of Ultron Hulkbuster, but I don't think either of those are nearly as cool as this thing here. This thing is absolutely fantastic. It comes with some great minifigures in which can be posed all over this building to create some amazing stories and add some nice action whether it be to your shelf or to your Lego city or anywhere like that. As you can see, it's pretty easy to take apart and access, which is essential for something like this. I'm glad that this isn't an open back. Like it's actually different. This is an open front. Um, the front panels are actually the thing that goes away, not the back panels, which was a little bit different. And I'm so glad that we didn't get something that was open back. I know the color, a lot of people say the color and the amount of window panels that you get is, is, is a little bit boring. But I think the point of this is to take your minifigures, pose them all over the place, create some fun stories within your Lego city, and just sort of do some cool stuff. And I can't wait to do that uh, with mine. So eventually we'll be taking all 25 minifigures and we'll be placing this gigantic skyscraper style building in the Lego city and we'll be creating some amazing stories and just sort of decking it out with awesome Marvel minifigures on Pop Culture Street. So make sure you stay tuned for that placing video. Let me know what you guys think of this amazing set by commenting below. Remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for some more great stuff coming out here in the near future. Thanks a lot for watching as always, and have yourselves a fantastic day. Peace out.